Our Michigan State Spartans getting absolutely mollywopped by the Minnesota Golden Gophers. So I have decided, because we talked about this game plenty before, and I was like, oh, Minnesota only throws the ball like 16, 17 times a game. They really focus on the running game. That's right up our alley. We should be okay. We should be able to fight in this one. I'm throwing that out the window, Ryan. From now on, I don't care if a team only threw once. I don't care if we face Army. All right? If Army is facing Michigan State this year, they are going to throw the ball 45 times because our secondary is so god-awful that we can't stop a high school quarterback right now. It is so bad. And apparently, we lost all ability to get pressure on a quarterback with our front seven as well, which just makes it even better for Spartan fans. We got nothing to look forward to this year, folks. Nothing. And this is not overreaction Monday, Tuesday, whatever. No, 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 no. This is seeing with my own eyes what we have and what we don't have. We don't have Kenneth Walker to cover up the mistakes from last year. We don't have that. We don't have that playmaker that can just actually carry the team on his back to 11 wins and a New Year's Six Bowl. We don't have that this year. Peyton Thorne has absolutely regressed. He's had one good game, and that was at Washington where it didn't even matter. All right? We got nothing at the quarterback position, apparently. We got nothing in the running back position. We got no offensive line. We got no defensive line. We got no secondary. I don't know what happened to Jacoby Winman. Apparently, he was kidnapped after the shutout in week two because I ain't seen him since. This Michigan State team is bad. Thank God we had Cupcake to start to get a couple of wins because this could have been an 0-12 season. As it is right now, I don't know how we get two more wins. I don't know how we get two more wins. If they have anything even remotely competent at quarterback, as long as he's got two arms and they aren't this long, we are not going to stop their passing attack. And I don't know how we get victories out of any of the games, especially the ones we got coming up. We beat Maryland with Talia throwing. <laughs> that man about to throw for 550 yards on our on our defense. We're going to beat Michigan with JJ? Not a chance. Ohio State? No way in hell. This is not happening. It is going to be a bad year. Prepare yourself for it now. It's only end of September. We ain't even in October yet, but I'm already trying to find Halloween masks to hide my Spartan fanhood. Yeah, the the passing defense is bad, but it was bad last year, and they still won 11 games. I don't, I don't think they're going to win 11 games, of course. No, I didn't think they were going to win 11 games at the beginning of the season, but you can win games with the god-awful pass defense, and it is something that this team has done, just not this year. But we've seen them have the ability to do it with – so with Peyton Thorne, you know, if we're playing like that blame game that we just played with the Lions, I think Peyton Thorne is probably last on my blame list because he like he's not getting time. And the thing that I think is really like crippling Peyton Thorne is, is well, okay, I'll start with this. He needs to be better. He needs to step up. If if Michigan State was going to repeat 11 wins or get to 9 or 10 that people thought they would get to, Peyton Thorne had to take a step up from what he was last year because we knew we didn't have Kenneth Walker. We knew we weren't going to have Jalen Naylor. So Thorne needed to step up and just the offense needed to change. Now, I know we brought in Berger and Broussard, but we knew the offensive line was bad too because they were bad last year. So it's not to say that the, we knew the entire offense was going to be you know, god awful or something, but we just knew the offense had to be different, right? And if it had to be different, it probably had to involve throwing the ball a little bit more. And you hope your quarterback would have taken a step up, and that hasn't happened. Where I think Peyton Thorne is getting maybe a little bit too much criticism, or why people should take a look at like really how difficult is Michigan State making it for Peyton Thorne is when Michigan State goes down 22 to nothing. Or when they, you know when they go down, how like however many points that Michigan State is going down by so fast, what that does is it essentially throws your offensive playbook out the window because the teams know one you're not really good at running the ball and two you're certainly not going to run the ball now because now we know you don't have Kenneth Walker and we know that your offensive line is bad so now you have to beat us with you know with Peyton Thorne just trying to sling the ball all over the place and he's not a good enough quarterback to beat defenses when they know that that is what is going to happen if you had a more balanced attack then I think Peyton Thorne could hurt you with some of the deep ball stuff that he's shown you know kind of the ability to do but 
if the team knows that you're just throwing the ball because they know you can't run it and they know that you're already down three touchdowns before halftime, then I think the game script completely flips, and that's what I think Peyton Thorne struggles with because now Michigan State's trying to get those points back because they know it's not like their defense is going to give up 22 points and then, you know, bear down and give up only three more the rest of the half or something. Or, you know, shut them out the rest of the half or keep them scoreless until the fourth quarter to try and help get your offense back in the game. So you're, you know, taking just kind of like effort shots now more because it's what you think that you have to do to win. And it might be what you have to do to win. You know, it and not that they almost beat Washington, but that was the game plan against Washington. And for a while, it looked like, hey, maybe they're going to be able to somehow get back in this game because of the kind of that philosophy on offense. But then the defense still couldn't stop anybody, and Washington just kept scoring. So every time you thought Michigan State was about to get close, Washington's, you know, Michael Penix threw for another touchdown. And then you're like, okay, now, now I know where this game is going. And that, so that's where I think I would shoot Peyton Thorne a little bit of, defense right I'd shoot him a little bit of bail on that and not even that he's been good I just think he's kind of the last on the list of problems that Michigan State has had and with Minnesota one thing I thought was really poor was the tackling you know if you looked at Minnesota's yards per carry it was probably close to five and I thought Michigan State when like I thought they were getting there they just weren't getting them down and if you're not getting them down then like kind of what the hell is the point of, uh, of getting there if you're not going to tackle them so then it allowed Minnesota to beat us with the run and the pass I know Jacoby women came out and he said we thought Minnesota was going to run the ball and then they started passing and you know and kind of like we failed to you know execute against the pass which you're like yeah no duh but no they weren't able to get any they started to bring more pressure and they just still weren't able to get there. So, like, I guess at least they made the adjustment that we wanted to see them make from the Washington game. It it just didn't work because the players weren't able to get there. But I did notice on third downs when they had Kale Holiday out there who, you know, can't cover a fire hydrant, that when he was out there on third third downs, he was blitzing and he was rushing the quarterback. So that part I did like, although it didn't work. You know, only part of the game I liked was, okay, at least they're making an attempt. And now it's just kind of up to the players to execute it. And obviously they weren't able to. The defense let Tanner Morgan have the game of his life, which is just a disgusting sentence to to say, especially with Chris Altman Bell out, Minnesota's top receiver. So then you thought, like, okay, you know, we, we might have a chance here. And still, there was no chance. There was just – there was guys wide open every single play, every time you drop back to pass. I mean, he's a fifth-year senior, so he's heady. You know, he understands the game. He's got a new offensive coordinator that's allowing him to actually move the offense. And they played it smart. I understand they have a great running back. Why would you play into Michigan State strength? Go play their weakness. And that's, I think, every opponent we are about to face is going to take this playbook and throw it right back at us. They're going to be passing all the time against us. And I don't see any way that we stop it. I agree with you, Peyton Thorne is the least of our worries for what Michigan State has coming up the rest of this year. He is a competent quarterback. I believe that he is the best option we have at quarterback. I know people are yelling for Noah Kim to get out there and Noah Kim looked good in garbage time. But when the game matters, when everything's going on, I want someone like a Peyton Thorne who's been through it and has shown that he can do it. But he needs an O-line that's going to give him time to do it. He needs wide receivers who are going to get separation and give him the spots to get the ball to them. And he needs a defense that can get off the field a little bit quicker than after the team gets into the end zone. Now, the offense didn't do the defense. It was early in the game. Early in the game, the offense and the defense, no favors. You are throwing a tired defense out there time and time again because you couldn't get a first down which only just made Minnesota's job easier early on to build that big lead. So in some cases, Thorne needed to do more and just didn't. And it just, if we are going to let the other team get the ball first every game and they go down and march right down our throats and score a touchdown to start every game, I don't know how we're going to have any excitement for when the offense comes on the field because it just seems like all the air has just been taken out of the building by one touchdown. And it's just the way a team can methodically march on our defense without any resistance whatsoever. There might be a little tiny resistance on like second down where like they only got a yard or two, but that's it. Like it's, 
It was consistent, moving the ball, chopping up our defense. Anything they wanted, they got, just like how Washington the week before. Anything they wanted, they got. It's just, it's just disheartening, man. It's just absolutely dis- disheartening and deflating to watch. I mean, look at, again, Tanner Morgan, 23-26. There's three incomplete passes the whole game. And one thing that I think you mentioned as I fumble with my headphone here is the you know kind of the the air being taken out and it goes back to when Michigan State falls down early, they really have to like kind of throw out their game script. You know, Michigan State only ran the ball fourteen times and this is a team that wants to be way more balanced than fourteen rushes and thirty one pass attempts. And then you compare that to Minnesota, who ran the ball 48 times and, you know, had had 26 pass attempts. It's like that's the part that Michigan State's not going to be able to overcome. You can't give up the early leads like that. You know, Minnesota, again, 14-0. It seemed like it was right out the gate, but 14 nothing at the end of the first quarter. And then Michigan State's defense, they gave up three points in the second quarter. So it was 17 nothing, but that's the kind of response that you want the defense to have at that point, right? If you're going to give up 14 nothing, we're going to give up three points and get us to the half offense. If you can get us seven or ten, then we still feel like you know we're, we're kind of in this game. But if you're going to put up a goose egg and we already gave up 14 points, I think that's where it just becomes disheartening. And that's where it feels like some of these games can be over way before they're actually over because a 14 point lead especially in college football I mean we just saw the Lions give up a 14 point lead but especially in college football like a 14 point lead is nothing you know these teams are no not like oh all these college football teams are bad but they are all just so mistake prone and mistake driven you saw it in the Michigan game the opening kickoff the thing bounces off the guy's face mask and then Michigan Michigan scores a touchdown in literally three game seconds, which I've never seen before. There's 1457 on the clock and Michigan is up 7-0 because college kids are just, like, they're just stupid. And, like, they they make a ton of mistakes that it can just, it can just put you right back in the game, but for Michigan State, you know, it just seems more disheartening when they're down, like, a 14 point deficit seems larger than 14 than, you know, it seems larger than 14, essentially. Yeah. That Michigan game, who knew the game winner could come with, with three seconds into the game? I mean, that was the game winner. You look at the rest of the football game. Maryland, you know, gave Michigan everything they could handle. If they don't spot Michigan seven points and they go and score on their opening and, drive and, seven and points. Yeah. And <laughs> at least one, I, I think, too. But, uh, boy, <laughs> we talk about some, some home cooking. Yeah, I, I agree with you, especially with our defense. Like, like it's just... It's just bad. I don't see a way out. Not this year. I don't see a Kenneth Walker pulling us out. I don't see Berger and Broussard, you know, turning into that. I don't see Peyton Thorne just going dumb all of a sudden and throwing for 500 yards. Like, I I just don't see it this year. Like, I'm reading pieces and they're like, oh, you know, it's going to be harder now to make a New Year's Six Bowl. What? (laughs) What? Make a New Year's Six Bowl? Are you kidding me? If we make a bowl, I'm going to do a handstand. I'm a, I, I can't do it, but I'm going to find a way to do it. If we make a bowl, that means we won six games. We won four more games this year. Like, I just don't see it. I don't see a team on our schedule that doesn't have at least a semi-confident quarterback that we can actually run our game against and not have to worry about them throwing all over the field against us because we don't have the guys to get it done in the secondary. I just don't see it. I mean, what you need is a quarterback to go out there and make mistakes in, you know, your your pass rush to get home. Obviously, that hasn't happened the last two games, but with some of these quarterbacks in the Big Ten, it can happen. Probably not going to happen yep. against C.J. Stroud. You know, probably not C.J. or J.J. McCarthy either. But maybe some of these other guys can give Michigan State the, the ball when they probably shouldn't give Michigan State the ball. I mean, you'll be able to capitalize that way. But, no, I don't think there's going to be a game where Michigan State is just out there locking people up in the secondary. You know, I think it'll be a game where the offense probably clicks, and if Michigan State wins, it might just have to be in a shootout. Yeah, like a 55 to 51 shootout. Cause, I mean, before it was, okay, we don't have Slade, we don't have Snow, we don't have Henderson. Like, and those are big losses. But – I don't know if those three guys come back. We're not going to get Snow back this year anyway. But even Slade and 
Henderson coming back, is that really going to be enough? Like, our defense looks so bad. I don't know how that is enough with those two guys coming back that it's going to make any kind of a difference in the season we're going to have. I mean, I think it'll make some difference. It's not going to turn the defense good or anything, but it'll it'll make it improved. <laughs> it'll make some difference, I think, because Henderson should be a, a leader back there. So hopefully that helps with some of the communication issues. But... Yeah, man, I don't know. You know, we'll see. We got, again, Maryland this weekend. And while it sounds like, I guess, we, you know, we'll talk about it on our show on Friday. But, you know, Talia should come here and throw the ball over, all over the place. Maryland's defense is also suspect. So that's not a game that I would just chalk up as an auto loss. But we're not going to win that game holding Maryland to 20 points or anything. That'll have to be one of those shootout games. No, 42 to 30. Hey, Ryan Griffin here. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Griffin and Bats. Be sure to give us your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to click the bell to receive the latest notifications from DSN and subscribe for breaking news, community blogs, polls, contests, and other content.